Okay, I've just begun work on next year's uh, robot for the National Robotics Challenge. And although none of my parts that I've ordered have come in yet, I've gotten a head start on building the uh, locomotion system. So it's going to be a rotary walker. Here's half of the uh, prototype that I built before. So it spins like this to move. And for my final, well hopefully it will be my final prototype that I enter, because um, I've put a lot of work into it already and I haven't even gotten any of my electronics yet, but I've um, cut out and drilled four of the wheels. They're octagon shaped, which means that there'll be eight bars that connect each wheel front and back. And I've done a little uh, experimentation and that seems to be just few enough so that I don't have to do a ton of work cutting all the bars out, but enough that it has a pretty stable ride. It's not um, go bobbing up and down too much between each corner of the um, corner of the octagon. So I've drilled holes in these just so that it's lightweight. These wheels are actually they're made of PVC, which is already pretty lightweight. And then the holes don't seem to affect the structure of it at all. They do make them quite lighter. And then if you look at my prototype, the bars are not connected very well at all. They're actually just with a nail. Um, and I'm not going to do that for the final one. The bar is going to come and turn and then be able to be connected flush with the surface of the PVC. So I don't want just straight bars. I need something that can be bent at the end and stay in that position. And I found that PVC works really well for this. The PVC that... Here, here's one of the bars I made. It You can heat it up. I've actually just rubbed my hot glue gun tip over it. And you can bend it, and it'll stay in that position. So I'll be able to have the bars going, turn, and hit flush with the surface of the wheel. So sadly, I cut out eight of these PVC rods, and they're too heavy. So I drilled holes in them, and they're still too heavy. So... All this work is pretty much being scratched, hundreds and hundreds of holes, and I am now um, I'm now decided to use this corrugated plastic stuff, and it's pretty much like a cardboard structure, but made of plastic, because this is much, much lighter, and it's just as strong as the PVC. It actually bends a little bit less, but the problem is I can't bend these at the ends like I wanted to, so I've cut out all of these pieces of PVC which fit in like this and I'll glue them in and then I can then bend this piece so it's the best of both worlds it's gonna be flush against the wheel after I bend them and it'll still be light and strong so there's a lot of work to you know, can't really move the camera to cut out all of these pieces for notching into each each of the spokes, but it should be worth it because you can't have a really heavy, heavy spokes because they're a moving part and it'll just um, put a lot of extra stress on the motors. It's, it's not worth it to do the rotary walking thing if it's significantly heavier than just having wheels. So hopefully this works. Now I won't be just having this surface touching the ground. I'll probably have a rubbery grip or something um, glued to the bottom of these. That way their uh, surface area will be put to use. They'll have a lot of grip on the surface, and uh, hopefully that'll help me get up the 45-degree plywood slope that I have to do. So it'll also help with uh, avoiding sinking into the gravel, as that's what I found when I experimented with the first prototype. It was actually very effective at just gliding right over gravel and not sinking again. So this is the start of my project. It's basically just all plastic parts cut out because I don't really have any any motors or anything to build a platform with yet. But it's a good start. Okay, all of my electronics came in and they seem to be working perfectly. So I'll give a quick tour of the stuff I bought. First up is this six channel servo controller. And this receives its inputs from a PS2 controller. So that's this. Originally, I bought a cheap knockoff $8 PlayStation controller, but that wasn't compatible, so got that figured out, and um, it actually has pretty good range. I was not very, um, I didn't have very high expectations for a PlayStation controller, just because 
I mean, you sit right in front of the TV. But it has good range. It's able to connect all the way on the other side of the house. And it's 2.4 gigahertz, so it's not going to interfere with the other competition. And um, if you compare the price of this system that I have to a regular remote control, 6-channel, 2.4 gigahertz receiver and transmitter, it's way cheaper. The uh, remote control systems are typically about $150 for 6 channels, and this board was made by Cheap Control Systems, so it was cheap. It's $35 in kit form, and this controller was $20, so the whole setup costs only $55. And, okay, so this, this controller will then communicate with the speed controller, and this is, let's see, I believe it's a Sabertooth, I don't know what model it is, but it can handle up to 12 amps, so this will be useful for projects much bigger than what I'm doing now. Yeah, I'll be able to reuse that later, because you can't have too high of an amps on the speed controllers, so figured I'd go high and it'd pay off later in other projects. And that that controller will be controlling these. These are the GM9 gear motors. Right now I've got the original motors out, which were lower amp, and I'm replacing them with the um, high amp motors, which have three times the speed and twice the power. And I realize that this will lower battery life, um, or reduce battery life, but the uh, the contest is only three minutes long, so that's not really a big deal. And these are SolarBotix GM9 gear motors. They're the faster gear motors, and I've used these before. I actually got these out of uh, RoboSapien. Uh, they're used in some consumer products, too, these exact motors. Um, and I've used them for other projects. They've been very reliable. So high hopes for this. They're a lot more powerful than they look. I mean... I know it's small, but these four should be easily able to hold hold up and move around a 12-inch by 12-inch platform, which is about the dimensions I'm thinking of right now. Um, yeah, so this is my main setup. I still don't know. Oh, yeah, I got wheels, too. These fit in right with the gear motors, and I'll use these as hubs to mount my real, real wheels. Um, so that's what I have now. It is basically enough to build the platform, not enough to... I'll still need to be getting more parts for the claw and stuff. I assume I'm going to be doing a claw to pick up the ping pong balls, but I still have a lot of other ideas. Got a vacuum in mind and some other concepts I want to try. So I'll be experimenting with those. And this... Um, both, the, both the servo controller and the speed controller have servo mixing, so... On this remote, I'll be able to have one stick, or you can also alternatively use the um, button pad, to control the movement of the robot and the other side to control picking up ping pong balls. And I also do have the fifth and sixth channel uh, controlled by these finger buttons. So I should have plenty of open channels for whatever I decide to add to this platform, and we'll see how mobile it is when I get all these motors and stuff mounted to my drive system.